Hey guys, it's Steve, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to make a battle mech. We're going to make the Mad Cat Mark II, the OG version from back in the day. I already blocked this thing out and textured it and made a pretty basic form. But we're going to take this thing a step further and add a bunch of detail to this. We're going to be using two add-ons. One is going to be Grid Modeler. Or some equivalent doesn't matter if you've got some aggressive destructive slash non-destructive boolean add-on and then I'm gonna be using cable Raider which is highly recommended if you want to just take things up to the next level the grid modeler is 20 bucks I don't get any money for a grid modeler but I'm gonna be using it because it's super powerful and you know you can just model out anything from a grid effectively calling a grid modeler and then cable Raider is going to place some very uh, nice cables here. Uh, it'll make connectors and all kind of cool things. And that's just the beginning of it. So let's jump right in. All right, guys, let's get started. Like I said, we're going to be using uh, this image here. We're going to also have a reference image. You're going to want to take up the front view by using one. You're also going to want to um, take up the side view three and real quick just to annotate just a little bit for you let's just say we've got our amazing mech with guns blazing and he's gonna be facing this way so that's three this would be one let's give you kind of a perspective idea kind of looks like a dinosaur actually it looks like a instantaneous t-rex anyways let's keep going removing that annotation and I'm gonna go ahead and load up the reference image but you can hit shift a and go to image reference get that in there let's scale it up to something decent this and what I want to do is go down to the image properties right here for this and I want to change this now it's up to you if you want this to show up in the um, perspective view as well you can but I'm gonna turn mine off so whenever I hit one it shows up and it will not show up at any other time just for this way now I could add in a second image for three and I'll have the side view I could put the side view in that's actually gonna get a little complicated I'm not really gonna do that right now we'll just hit one and we're gonna block this thing out and it's going to be a little tricky, but if you hit 3 and Shift A, Reference Image, let's bring in the same image. And you can kind of see the lines here. You can scale this up. So like G and Y could move this over and center it. So now as I go back and forth between these views, and I'll go ahead... And just for the setup here, I can turn on the perspective view for both of them. So if I hit one, let's see, G and Y, let's see, G and X. There we go. It's kind of moving for me now. There we go. So I'm kind of centering these, if you will, just between the two. So when I go to three on third view, it should be pretty good and we can add some extra parts I would suggest that you model it out from the side first and you can model everything out and then just use the reference the reference image here technically in the image view to get the extra detail dimensions things like that just kind of feel it out and so this you know like I said you can just kind of line this up this is a little generic but it's the only uh, picture I could find that would work with the orthographic modeling uh, style. So what I'm going to do is bring the transparency or excuse me the opacity down for each one of these and so it's just barely visible the amount of detail that it has. So if you press 1 you'll see a good bit of detail and you press 3 now you can flip between the two. Now for this work um, I'm literally going to be doing everything from a from the side view number three I'm going to be doing everything from a cube and I'm going to be using like I said grid modeler 
And if you don't have grid modeler, this really isn't going to work out too well. So I want to hit G and Z and kind of bring this down. And then I can start modeling out the foot from here. And if you want to take on a better view, control spacebar will get you in a full screen perspective. Now I'm going to grab my cube and kind of move that somewhere in place. Now grid modeler is pretty, pretty cool. I actually want to put it right here. There's a little bit of a division and then maybe G and let's see, you kind of bring that just about there. All right. So grid modeler, what do you do with that? You jump into edit mode, go to face select, and then you can hit W if you just downloaded it and you can pull up grid modeler here. I also have a quick menu set up with grid modeler, separate by selection, checker deselect, extrude faces along nominals, and invert. I have symmetrize, circle, forget about that, uh, bridge edge loops, grid fill, which is pretty useful, and the edge bevel weight, which is going to help us, and the relax is going to help us. So we're going to be using the edge bevel weight the most. We're going to be using some relax, grid modeler predominantly, and separate by selection a lot. And the like the fifth one we're going to use a good bit of is going to be extrude faces along nominals. Now, if you want, you could start this off and you could go into like the blender kit and pull up a human scale model and see how this thing is going to look compared to a human scale. And it's actually going to be pretty massive. The average human height is 58 and that is for like a western UN european you know um statistic if you will so that's pretty big we want this thing to be epic we want it to be pretty big so you use the human scale to do that now i'm going to go ahead and grab him and his empty it's going to be a pain in the butt i'm going to delete that now i've got a couple of folders here in my hierarchy I've got one for bull tools and one for the leg. And so right now, just for this, and let's put these in their own so they don't get confused. And I'll press M, new collection, and just call this reference and hit enter. And let's get to modeling. So I just want to kind of keep this thing nice and organized. So going in for face mode, Grid modelers, Q, the grid, control, middle mouse wheel will change resolution. And to get a better view of that, alt, middle mouse wheel will kind of bring that up. And now I can get in here and see so I don't have to have the grid too big, but I do want to kind of model out maybe this lower area here first. And like I said, you've got some other pieces in here if you wanted to uh, work on them first, or like I said, if you can't necessarily um, see them you can brighten them up out and bring up the opacity on that just a little bit because it's kind of hard to see all right i like that that's a lot better now back to grid modeler and i'll bring this grid out so i can see what i'm doing now it looks like i've got a section here i want to kind of start off and absolutely none of this has to be perfect because you're you're literally just drawing it in so i'm gonna go ahead and draw in let's see i probably could have gone back a little bit here let's bring this back and i'm just control z back because you can pretty much do what you want grid modeler Trying to follow this little pattern here to grab the foot area. There we go. That looks good. And I have to hit Q because I'm using a laptop, which creates a boolean, but it also creates a drop down menu. So I can select create face. And now that I've got that face, I'll just extrude that out. And we'll add bevels and all that fun stuff to this later. And I'll clean up the cube too. Not really too worried about that. Now I could grab this face. In fact, 
I could just delete these faces. It's kind of bugging. It's kind of bugging. Go ahead and get rid of those. Let's see. Can I get that one? No, it's not going to let me get that one without Control Z. There we go. And just delete that. There's no need to have all that sitting there. So I can just use this. Make sure you're back. Hit three a couple times, you know. Just make sure you're there so you don't screw things up. And I want to extend this grid out. And if the grid comes up funky for some reason, you know, quit what you're doing. Go back and apply the scale. And then go back. Mine actually looked fine. But sometimes it doesn't. All right, this looks good. So now I'm going to model out the next pieces. And I don't, like I said, I don't have to be flawless with this. They can overlap a little bit. There's always going to be cleanup at the end of everything that you do. But it does not have to be a lot. All right, that looks pretty good. And I do want there to be some like little extra pieces here as well and let's see we could kind of separate that a little bit yeah that's fine and if you find you're not kind of where you should be you can scroll out shift middle mouse wheel come over and get you know kind of get back into a proper zoom and this would be another piece at least as far as the details as far as it looks, I think I'll just go ahead and bring this piece in a little closer. And we'll come right over here. And I'll hit Q, create my face, come out. And I could probably extrude this one out a little bit further. And then what I want to do is I want actually to separate that one. It's not going to let me do it now, but I can hit L over that piece. Q, separate by selection. I can hit L over this piece and Q and separate by selection because I want these to be separate. So when I come back out, I can hit G and I think it's X. Yeah. And I kind of move that piece. So that way we start ending up with the mech foot as it was, as it is. And now I've got this other little section here, and all this really just would be, I mean, I can't even tell you the amount of time. Obviously, you can see how much time is being saved here just by drawing out this grid. All right, let's start sensible here. <clears throat> I think something like, I'm going to make the grid a little bit smaller. There we go. And about here. And you can take a little liberty with it. You don't have to do everything exactly the way you see it you just don't you can solidify these things later too if you want you don't have to make it absolutely flawless and i would kind of promote not to even worry about it that way so create a face and i can extrude that one in and if you look down here let's see oh, i got rid of the menu but if you look down at the bottom you'll see that there's a separate i just keep forgetting to select it it's okay because with the workflow that we're doing here we should be able to do that without too much problem take up seven for the top view and you could start kind of lining these up a little bit that looks pretty good see if there's anything funky here g and x let me scale that piece down a little bit because i want it where it is and it may or may not fit in perfect, but we could join these. Like I say, do a bunch of different things with it and clean it up later. All right, back to it. This really shouldn't take too long to do a block out this way. And so you're just grid modeler, um, doing grid modeler basically on everything. Let's see. What's going on here? Apply scale, perhaps? back to grid modeler was i just separating by selection again all right so that's cool i'll do this piece and i just want to kind of go here maybe up a little bit because i'm imagining that piece is a little bit further through than what we actually see and i didn't really bring that down far enough let's do that and kind of touch it up space bar to end that draw, by the way, if you kind of get stuck in it. 
and then I'll just go ahead and create this and I'll go create face and now it says separate the object Nope, it's not gonna do it this time that was weird but okay did it delete yeah it deleted it that's interesting what am I using here blender 3.3 yeah that shouldn't have happened but if it does I mean that's why we create save points so you don't have a lot of problems and so we just kind of do that again bring this up down I'm just gonna keep this shape really really simple I think that looks good and you do have to make the connection for those so don't think you can get away without doing that so to make sure you make that connection I'm gonna take the top view here L separate selection object mode select it G X and move it over just a touch and now we're starting to get somewhere and there's a reason I want all these in one folder is later we can apply a modifier set to this and apply it to all of them at one time so we just have to modify one of these and then we'll basically do all the hard work on everything else now let's just move up and keep going grid modeler and I want to bring that grid up and out and you can I think as far as I've seen anyways you can make this about as big as you want and it doesn't actually hurt anything all right so let's go ahead square this up kind of looks like there's a little down piece here I'm just gonna presume this maybe stops right there and kind of bring it up that's pretty nice and these shapes man to get this like I didn't even make my first mech like this I did it the hard way did a bunch of bullions and it took me a day and a half and so we're gonna do this in I don't know something like an hour or so and it's if you're that's if you're following along you know at that pace and I would say this piece could be a little bit bigger and I'll just separate this by selections and keep the same workflow here and scale this a little bigger just kind of take some liberties here apply that scale don't forget though if you're doing that you really got to apply the scale to anything you've actually moved otherwise you're gonna run into problems later with the bevels it's not gonna take it all it's gonna be a mess and nobody wants that and if you look at this we've already got the foot done and we're moving up the leg here and it's only been like you know 15 minutes of me blabbing it's been more <laughs> it's been more talking uh, anyways grid modeler and let's just keep rolling with this thing and let's see I'm just gonna say that this piece can go inside of this one a little bit like it's a hydraulic pump leg if you will and I think that looks pretty fair I'll actually bring this up a little further something like something like that actually ends up looking okay and I'll hit Q and that actually cuts it and we could do bullions and all that cool stuff later just gonna block it out right now I wanna create that face and extrude it doesn't have to be too long and I'll just kinda mess with that later and grid model that I really like to just make this one shape right here but yeah I'll go ahead and make the big the bigger shape here first and now if you've got these corners here and you don't like all the sharp edges you can bevel there's a very good option and I'll just show you so I make my connections here and it didn't connect a little pain in the butt all right so I can right click go to that other menu I can either left click it or I can box select it and then I can just hit B for bevel and now I can add some segments and it looks like I've got a funky spot there at the top I didn't really I didn't draw that correctly so no big deal 
just going to redraw this. And this is the good thing about using a program like this. If you screw something up, it's really not that big of a deal. It'll take you just a very short period of time to kind of like recover from it, if you will. And I think I want to do that. That looks good. So now I could right click that, select it, and then run a bevel and run like four segments on it. Q. Cut this, create a face, and now I've actually got a nice beveled out um, face area. And that's going to be like a hip, so it's probably going to be a little bit bigger. And I think we can change all these shapes and sizes to kind of match up a little later on. And look at that, we're almost halfway up the mech here. <clears throat> now I'm going to go into wireframe because there's a good bit of detail here that I don't have. And I'll hit Grid Modeler here, and then C for Circle. And then I'll hold Shift, middle mouse wheel, and kind of bring that circle up until I've got like 34 maybe. 34 seems good. That's good. And then right click, left click, to grab to the other menu. G, kind of move that down, scale that up. That looks pretty good right there, and I can hit Q. Create a face. And let's see. That, interestingly enough, ended up being painted on the other side. Doesn't really matter too much. And if I come back out, hit L over that, take a top view, GX. You know, would probably scale that in a little bit more. In fact, I don't think any of this is lined up just yet. Let's fix that. Start centering a little bit more here, make sure it all makes sense. And I'm just right clicking to deselect other stuff and then L hovered over the one object, which will allow me to kind of move these things around a little bit. And I want to do the same for this one, but I'll take the front view. G and X and kind of move that pump around a little bit because you see how that's starting to look. It looks pretty nice, but I definitely won't, don't want to like get out of sync and of course, you know, separate everything. So it should be okay. And you know, you can come back and add all this extra detail at the end if you wish. I'm just going to keep blocking out and grid modeler. Now I want to see, I'm just going to imagine that this piece kind of comes through this one, maybe a little bit, and then bring it up. And I will definitely add a bevel to this. And let's see, just kind of imagining it through the mesh. And that's why you have multiple views of it. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I think that's actually okay. That's fine. I'll create that face. And you've got a list if you get lost. Um, hopefully I said that at the beginning, but if you were to hit H on the, let's see, pull up grid modeler and hit H, you get a command list here. It's hard to read, but it will definitely take you through everything that you need to know for like some of the finer things. Then you hit H again to get rid of that. I just extrude this one out now for the body piece and that looks a little bit more like a chassis piece to me. So and I can move this over because obviously that is going to be the leg. So that's good. We can at least line that up once we get done with the initial block out here of the the leg assembly I'll actually go ahead and do that now let's take up the front view G and X on my reference image and I'll just kind of line this up arbitrarily about like that nope like that and then I want to grab the torso piece that we just cut out G and Z and it actually fits pretty good and it looks like I need to put the origin back to geometry so I can scale that piece up. 
Now what this piece is going to end up doing for us is allowing us to begin to mirror these pieces to create the other leg set because we're not going to do that. We're not going to be drawing out uh, both sides like that. And that'll be mirrored and as we transfer these and I hit H2 hide. Well as we're doing this and it looks like my other face was actually there. Delete that. What we'll do is we'll mirror everything to here. So let's go ahead and set up the very first piece which will be this base part of the foot and I want to come down here and let's just hit A for all, make sure all these are inside of leg for that folder. So we can select and do good things. And I want to add in a weighted normal. I'll go ahead and add in a bevel. We're going to have to let's see, shade that smooth. I want to go to the vertex area, auto smooth it and come back over here and what we're going to do is fix up the bevel the bevel has to be on top the weighted normals is always going to be at the bottom so that ends up looking pretty nice and you need even segments so two or four would be good to start and then you can kind of start bringing these in and out to kind of sharpen up those bevel edges make them look nice um, bring down your geometry go to miter outer sharp to arc and it will clean up some extra shading issues for you that's about all you really need to do there, but you can hold down shift and left click to change your bevel. But just remember wherever you set it, kind of stick with that so your shape language is the same for everything else. And what I also want to do before I change anything is I want to mirror this. And where's the mirror? Mirror is going to have to come up. And I want to mirror this to the torso piece. All right, so now I've got that piece there. And apparently I've got a little extra face there. I don't really need that face, so I'm going to select that and delete that face out of there. Maybe not. Well, and that's interesting. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but I'll go into Edge Select. Okay, that's a totally different piece. That's why it's not working. I must have double created a face. It happens. And so let me just select that loop and hit F to fill it. And All right, go ahead and finish this thing up. So go back into face select. I'm going to go to grid modeler and scale this thing up. My resolution doesn't have to be quite so high. Let's get this grid nice and big. And I'm going to cut this thing off. Let's see. Kind of seems like this would be a good way right here. This looks pretty good. Kind of make that carrier piece right there and go ahead and create that face. And I'll extrude that a little bit. I don't have to do too much with it just yet. <clears throat> and I'll take back up the top view. And let's get face select again. Go back to grid modeler. Scale it up. Now I've got a shape here in the front. And I'm probably just going to put a sphere half cut off right there. Something pretty simple. Doesn't have to be too crazy. And I'm going to make this bottom piece here. And then I actually want to kind of square these up a little bit. I'll definitely bevel this one out. Something like that. Right click. Bevel. Add four segments and go ahead and create a face. And that's three for you if you have to create the faces. And I'll just extrude that a little bit. LGX, kind of move that out to the edge so I can figure out what I want to do with that. I'm going to go ahead and model out this piece right here. And there are 
just a ton of details we can add in this thing. And I'm going to kind of overlap this a little bit. Something like, actually, if I just come down a touch, come over here. Let's see, I'm not going to follow and trace that because I'm pretty sure this would come out right about here being a separate piece. And I'll add a slight bevel to that for segments. Hit Q and create my face. And let's see what that part really looks like here. That is G and X. Let's see if we move it over there. L, G, X. Kind of bring that in. Do something like that. Okay, that's starting to look pretty good. I can hide these just to get a little bit of a better look and see those parts and how that is fitting inside. That's actually pretty nice because you would actually had to have made a very, very intricate bullion cut to get that. And it just wouldn't have been very fun at all. So let's see, G and X, maybe move that over, G and X. And I think that was one of my outside pieces. So maybe bring it something like that. And I can mirror all these parts to the other side. Alt H and bring all these back. Go back to number three. And I want to finish these little faces here. Just select one face at a time. And kind of looks like this piece right here. Just kind of protrude in a little bit. Maybe something. Let me control Z that back a little bit. Maybe something like that. That looks good. And if your line is still dragging, then you didn't make a good connection there. And I'll just create a face here and extrude that one. Play with all of those a little bit later. Grid modeler again. And I'm going to go ahead and make the cannon, which will certainly have to be repositioned a little bit. Let's see. I want to control Z that back. So it's a little bit nicer. So I'm going to have to do it again. There we go. That looks good. And I will bevel that piece as well. I can box select that, B, and bevel it for segments and Q, create the face. And I'll take up the view of one. And just kind of extrude that bad boy out like that. And we can work on the other side of it. So that's why it's good to have both of these. And we're going to start rearranging all these parts in just a quick moment. Now if there's some other parts, you hit Z and go into wireframe. <laughs> and you can start adding the extra parts to it if you wish. Uh, for now, though, I'm actually going to go back to object mode and let's see, I'll just hide the side view for now. Now, these parts are kind of like if you look at them, go to wireframe, you look at them, they go kind of out. They're a little bit bow legged, and there's some extra pieces here that we have not made yet, so we can make those pieces. And so you could. Rotate 
Let's see how that ends up. If I rotate and then scale that on X, G, X, maybe move that in a little bit, maybe rotate those as well. G and X, kind of move that in and rotate it just a little bit more. G, X, looks kind of decent. You can play around with that a little bit. The feet make it look a little bit more uh, realistic, like it's actually got a pose, a stance going on. And everything is still pretty, uh, pretty much lined up. So let me go ahead and grab these pieces here. I'm actually going to have to hide that background for a second. There we go, that's what I wanted. And I could rotate that one. G and X perhaps something like that and then bring it back and there we go that's probably good enough let's see what we look like here all right that's pretty good so I'm gonna grab Let's see, is that nice and flat? I'll take this piece here. I want a nice square piece for the grid modeler to work with. And I'll go ahead and scroll that out. Change the resolution a little bit. Something like that. And I'm just going to work on the right side. So I presume it would be good to go and start somewhere from the middle. And I'll just bring this out. And these pieces can all be adjusted. It's pretty cool. Bring it to something like that. And I want to bevel that for segments. Again, don't need too many. Q, create the face. It'll let me. And now I've got the torso piece. So I can extrude the torso piece back just a little bit. And then hit L, G, and Y should do it. Let's hit one. That's not looking too bad. Maybe take a top view here. That is extremely difficult to see. So I'm just going to grab the solid view here and just hide these. It's going to be a, a little play with these back and forth, just kind of hiding them and getting this piece kind of where I want it. But G and Y looks pretty good. And it can be kind of sticking out a little bit. It's not really too big of a deal. Yep, not bad. And then we'll mirror that in any other pieces like this one and add the bevel to everything all right so for the pieces that were added that are not currently mirrored that will be all of these pieces right here and i should be able to shift right click like anywhere the foot control c and copy those modifiers and it should pop that over. Now there's obviously a little bit of cleanup. It's going to be however you want this to end up looking. And there's a whole, whole lot of potential here. It's actually starting to look pretty good. Let's see. Weighted, bevel, mirror, all good. And then this piece, I may scale up a touch. And I'm going to apply that scale. Apply that scale. Pretty sure I messed with that one as well. And let's see. I have that base be a little bit bigger, maybe. Give it just a, some nice shadows whenever you do go to render it. You'll have these nice little shadows from all the bevels and all the little creases and stuff. It should actually look pretty good. I'm going to pop back over to the side view. And I don't have this piece right here, so I'm going to actually make a little piece for this. And I'll just jump into face select to do another grid. 
kind of encompass everything and I want to start off like right about here and I'm gonna try to give this a little breath like a little little area to work with let's see right about I nah, just go ahead and do it like this There we go, Q, and create. Actually, I didn't like that. I don't like that at all. I want to do a little better setup than that, a little higher resolution. I want to get that to look better. And so I can start a little closer. I want to line that up. There, that is much, much better, because we can do anything we want with Grid Modeler. Let's see, bring that over a touch more and I don't have a problem just bringing this down maybe right about here I bring it over and I'm gonna cut it back here and just kind of do it however I really want that looks pretty good that would also look even better with the bubble four segments Q Create my face. And screwed that a little bit past. Take up the top view. G and X. Maybe scale that on X. Looks pretty good. Jump back to object mode. Apply that scale. And that's not bad. Not too bad at all. So now what we can do is cut in a boolean. This might be a little bit more tricky. So we can cut a boolean in for the cockpit right here. And obviously don't forget to create plenty of save points or you're going to catch yourself in a bad situation and you're not going to have all that hard work you just did. All right, so let's grab the front view. You can grab any one of these. Let's, uh, let's jump into edge mode for any of this and you can press shift s and bring the cursor to the selected it's a little bit different if you've got machine tools on it's uh, going to be shift s into edge and so now the cursor is perfectly there i want to hit um, go back into object mode shift a let's drop in the cylinder rotate it on the x at 90 make sure there's 64 verts at least Take up a top view. Let's scale this up. Scale it on the Y touch. Take three, G and Z, kind of bring it down below that head point there. Maybe up a little bit more. And let's continue to scale that on the Y and move it out. And I want to bring it down. I don't like that little um, piece right there. Oops, we'll hide it, Control Z. G and Z and move that down just a touch. I want to shade it smooth, auto smooth. All right, looking pretty good. I want to go into edge select. I want to shift alt and select that. And I want to bring this back, maybe chamfer. And then let's add in, say, four, five, six. Because I'm trying to keep the geometry looking nice and even. I believe I've got six. Here we go. Let's go six on the bevel let's add in about seven or eight loop cuts add some geometry in there keep the shading nice there we go and now i'm going to bring back my reference images and go to three and let's, uh, let's go to wireframe potentially just grab that and hit g you could arrange this to be somewhere in that area. All right, so I've moved it down a little bit, and this is the part where you kind of get into the weeds, and there could be some actual cleanup. So I want to hide all of that. We've got a pretty decent basic shape here, and I probably see classically these come out a little bit more, so we could draw something in to kind of hold those. I don't like the distance there so actually I just kind of bring it out like that 
Doesn't look too bad. Maybe rotate that just a touch and bring that back to the geometry so I can rotate it down. So I don't really want them facing that direction. Is there rockets, right? I'm going to fire out. So from here, you could bullion this. You could just leave it alone. All right, so now I want to create the, the weapons, and they look kind of puny here, so I'm going to change that up a little bit. I want to pick a face that is obviously you know front-facing directly. It makes sure that's pretty important. And I'll select the grid modeler and bring this bad boy up to something like that. Resolution could be a little higher with this one, so it's a nice draw. And actually scratch that. I want to hit C for circle, kind of pick up the middle spot here. There we go. And if I roll in the middle mouse wheel in and out, I get all these different shapes. And then I can kind of change it to something like that. Right there looks good to me. And I don't want another one. Control Z back on that. There we go. That's better. So now I can move this thing around. And I don't really want it right here. But I'll actually just... Uh, I'll leave it there so I can draw it. And I'll go ahead and hit Q and drop that in and create my face. And I'll just extrude that back a good bit. Hit L, G, Y, and move that back over. Hit 1. And now I can grid model with the front face here. And let's just finish this up and give it this kind of weapon overlay like a little protective overlay thing going on. Something like that. And... It doesn't have to be exactly like that one by any means. sure that connects and I am not going to add a bevel to that I'll just hit Q and create that face and then I can extrude that as my weapon cover doesn't have to go completely see L G and Y that looks pretty good and now I can separate that by selection and I will Grab this one and separate that one by selection as well. Go back into object mode. Let's hit, let's go into edit mode, alt and recalculate outside. Let's try that cable one more time. Create the cable and I want the arms to come out. It's going to look kind of funny. I may put it down a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to have to put it down. Because that's not going to look necessarily good like that. The guns are too high. The guns are supposed to be down by the hips a little bit. So if I select both of these, G and Z, pick up a nice front view. That looks pretty good. So I'll create another cable. And I want this to be a little bit lower, perhaps. Kind of scale that up to something like that. Doesn't look too bad. All right, all right. So for this, we can kind of bring in something like another cylinder, and we'll just scale that down, scale it in just a little bit. Forward slash, bring it out, shade it smooth. Go to auto smooth. Go into edge, select, and select these edges. Put a nice little chamfer, maybe a couple segment bevel on there, whatever you want. I'm just going to add a little bit of a chamfer. Go to face select. You could inset that with I. And I'll hit the extrude faces along nominals. And I can bring that in just a little bit. And then I'll hit ES, scale that in. I can extrude that back along nominals again. And then maybe scale that in. It's doing the same thing top and bottom. If you don't, you can just symmetrize that. 
I'll add in a couple of loop cuts just to keep my geometry looking good. And go back to object mode. That's fine. Forward slash back. And if you don't like how that is, you can change it. I'll apply the scale. I'm going to shift select this. Hit go into edit mode. Control shift C and I will add connectors. And so now I've got connectors here. So I can offset, I can hit T to scale these up a little bit. And you know, like that's pretty big. Don't need that. And probably could uh, do a little bit better with those connectors. But what I think I'll do is I'll just change the size of the shield a little bit. And then I've got an offset. So I can bring these up if I wish. I do want them kind of buried in the edges a little. And if I wanted to flip it, I can hit A, which would flip the direction, but obviously we made them the same on both sides, so no big deal. So I'll just left click to place those. And I can just make a folder, new folder for that, and I'll just call that connectors. And that way I can come over here and turn connectors off from the render and everything else, but it'll still keep the segment here. Let's kind of scale this out perhaps a little. Maybe scale that up a touch and apply those scales. Looks pretty good. Now I can start mirroring stuff to the other side. You know the drill. Grab mirror modifier and tag that in. And just use the chassis or something. And there's something crazy going on with that piece. So I'm just mirroring to the front for now. And let's see, I'll grab these and control C and copy those modifiers and bring that over there. And we're starting to get a mech. Now you can go in, there's a lot of other details. I know the tutorial is probably getting a little bit long. Let's scale these bad boys up because guns are supposed to be a little bit more dangerous than that, a little bigger. Now you can start insetting these, doing some extrusions. And from here, you can start putting in some barrels and things like that. And that is it for the block out. You know, if you've got some different things going on here, you can get rid of these mirror modifiers unless there's some extra things you want to do. So when you go to move them around their actual mesh, make sure you don't have any bullions at the bottom. And I'm going to go through and apply the mirror, especially that, you know, it transferred over to some of these center pieces. And I don't really want that. And you can go ahead and, you know, scale some of these other things, make the feed a little bigger, just apply your scales, have fun, and I'll do another tutorial finishing this up and, you know, some more modifications, some better weapons and things like that, barrels and some textures. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.